Uh, it's Public Works Committee meeting at July 27th. I can't remember the last time we've done this, but it's nice to have Mr. Gookin and Kiki here. So we're going to start it off with our esteemed engineer, Chris Bosley. Talk to us, Chris. All right. Well, thank you ha for having me before you once again, now that we've got these meetings again. Uh, today I come before you with an agreement with a private property owner to put a swale onto a portion of their property um, where we have flooding concerns. So this here is Kathleen Avenue and Ramsey. And the first uh, street coming off of Kathleen to the south, uh, when you go west of Ramsey, is Player Drive that goes into the Fairway subdivision. Well, before you get to the Prairie Trail Crossing, We've got a couple of catch basins across the road right here, and I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see more what I'm talking about. But these two catch basins get overwhelmed. They go into a dry well here, and we have worked on this many times over the years, cleaning it out, digging it up, trying to get it working again. It'll work for a short time, and then it gets plugged up. And during large storm events, we get water all the way across the road here. So because there is right of way that pretty much comes to this um, this dry well here and then there's a 10-foot utility easement outside of that this area here is isn't very suitable for building new apartments or anything like that plus there are two gas lines that run through this area as well so it gets a little complicated for any property owners so we approached the, uh, the owners of this apartment complex here called the Lodge Apartment or Trail Lodge Apartments and asked if it would be possible that we could just build an overflow swale kind of in this shape right here in the midst of these trees so that when that flood, when stormwater exceeds the capacity of that dry well and, and catch basins there, it'll overflow into a swale area that we would maintain as far as cleaning it out or anything like that that needed to be done. Um, they would still be mowing it as part of the normal landscaping work, but we talked to them about we would make this as mowable as possible for them so it wouldn't be an inconvenience to them. Um, this is the first of a few different swale projects that I'm going to be bringing to you. Uh, we're working on another one on Government Way, and I hope to bring that to you soon, too, because that one has some serious flooding problems in a five-lane section. Um, and then we've got a deal going with the Idaho Transportation Department for some swales in those uh, where US-95 ramp dives off down to Northwest Boulevard. There's the big green area um, there between that ramp and 95 and Northwest Boulevard. I talked to ITD this morning about it to see what their feelings are on that. And they think that just an encroachment permit might be the way to go on that one. And that's something I brought to you before, but um, I just wanted to give you an update on these projects we've got going on. Um, so with that, I would stand for any questions that you might have on this agreement. Kiki, no, I, I think it's a great partnership to solve a problem for property and the, the property owner and the city. So I think it, it looks good. Okay. Thank you, Woody. So Chris, uh, who put in the dry well? Uh, that would have been the city of Coeur d'Alene. Okay. So when, uh, when this, or well, I'm sorry. It could have been the developer when that was built, um, but we are responsible for it. it. It is in city right of way. So when this, this came in, because this is new, this came in, um, there's a review process that goes through. Why wasn't the swale necessitated when this came in? Um, this was before my time, so I don't know why the swale wasn't put there. Um, and why they went directly to a dry well like they did, but they figured that that was going to take care of the flooding problem. It may have been the lack of right of way um, to put a street sw side swale in there. I'm not sure why it wasn't put in the first place. What's it gonna cost? The work would be um, just a, a day or two of our um, drainage crews time so a couple thousand dollars to do the work and then get it um, sodded again 
um, but the savings would be immeasurable in times that we spent every year dealing with those flooding problems down there. Okay. So to answer that first question, it might have been that that area to the west wasn't developed back then, so maybe it didn't contribute that much to that whole area, possibly why it didn't get a swale to begin with. Yeah. All right. Guys, want to make a motion? I want to keep it in house. Let it move forward. No, nope, I'd make a motion to approve the easement agreement with Park Place Investors for the construction of a stormwater swale adjacent to Player Drive to mitigate flooding. Second. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent, you think? Consent, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Kenny. Uh -huh. Our fire chief is here in regards to our fireboat garage. And good afternoon. And I wish I had a little better news for you. As you know, we went to council in June asking for budget authority to go forth and build our boat garage, Station 5, here at Third Street Dock to house our firefighting vessel. And we opened up bids a couple weeks ago. And much to my surprise, they are exceptionally over. The estimate, uh, or the engineer's estimate, two hundred twenty thousand dollars. I, th I think I provide I provided you with those different bids. There were four of them, and they were far beyond what we have budgeted. Um, I would ask you to please, for council, to reject those bids. And I'm working very close with Bill Greenwood, who has had great experience in this and going to a contractor to negotiate. We believe that that would be the best way to go forth this for, for you need to forgive me a little bit because I've never done this process before because we've done okay in the past but working with Bill and Randy we feel pretty comfortable that that will be the way to go forward and trim this down to to budget so I guess that's really as simple as it can be for me to ask you if we can do that questions Dan Thank you, Woody. The only thing I would say is, you know, don't don't cut yourself short. I mean, I don't want to see something out there that doesn't reflect quality. We agree. Mm -hmm. We agree. We just got to get it floating because, you know, the boat has to come out of where it's at at Blockwell at the end of this boating season. Yeah, so I know, we will I be a boat without a home soon. So, but we would do that. And you, if we come up with a new drawing, I promise council will see it and you will get, you will approve the final bid. So you, okay. you will get to see that. You know, I, meant to look up this code I didn't so can what you're asking for us to do is two things one is that we reject all four of the bids and the other by statute it looks like what we have to do is declare that has that this needs to be put out on the open market and that's what the code requires is that right straight to the Adams. brains of the outfit for me right there Yes, the code requires the council make a declaration or a determination that it would be more economical to uh, <clears throat> secure this bid on the open market rather than through rebidding. Okay, so, um, and you're comfortable with, I mean, from the looks of these numbers, a couple hundred thousand and over what even budget was, um, you're comfortable that there isn't a reason to put this out to another bid for time and for, um, the ability to have uh, it rebid again would just give us the same numbers. Correct. It wasn't a timing in the season issue Very when this correct, went out. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm always curious about that bid process and want to make sure that we're following the statute that um, it wasn't just like sometimes you know you put a bid out and it's early in the season and and people are you know really busy but then you put it out later in the season and the same people can come in much much lower right. so I'm just wanting to make sure that we've kind of thought through that process and that uh, but with this being so much higher over I think uh, it sounds like the going out on the open market is the thing to do so we have to have two different things done then today is that right yes okay so I just had one question, uh, Chief. So the boat is good till November in the where it's at right now, yes. and then we have a trailer we can put it on. I mean, you got storage and stuff. If this, we're hoping to get this pulled off this yes. winter. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I think by the winter we will. Our hope was to have it done in September, because they don't think the build time for this is extraordinarily 
big because it's in essence a pole building. Okay. But again, like the numbers coming up, one thing we saw right off the bat was the contractors asked for 30 more days, just right off the bat, like almost first day. So no, the timing will be okay. not quite what we wanted as so well. So we do have a storage place. And we're still working on a plan B for the winter because you know I don't like taking that out of the water at all, except for maintenance. Got it. Okay. One more question, and uh, Kiki reminded me of this. So is it true that last time this happened we kind of got in trouble? You know, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and, and something was ringing a bell. There was a red flag, and I was kind of like, what? We, we misstepped on something when we put something out to bid or something like that happened, but I, I, I couldn't recall what it was. So. It was someone who came with a bid, and it was, I think it was her parks, and it was like the last minute, and their bid was not in on time, and so we rejected all the bids, and then we went back out and bid to them. But that's not the case here. No, sir. They all came in. Five yes, or four of them came in. Yes, sir. Okay. I, yep. That's that is okay. what happened. Good. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. My again, my concern is I know you know you got a deadline, and of course they know you have a deadline. Mm -hmm. um, I I just I want to see something nice. You know. Yes, sir. That's just uh, you know I don't want to have us go. Oh, well, you know here's here's the Sears version. You know, of I can make fun of them because they're no longer around. Um, yeah. Of the uh, of the the you know fire station five, as opposed to something that would be compatible with all the other fire stations we have. We agree. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's true, and that's a very very expensive piece of equipment that we need to take care of. So um, I'm with with Dan on that. So I would. Um, are Are you ready for a motion? Or yes, okay, then I would. Uh, make a motion that council reject the bids received for the construction of the fireboat garage declare that it would be more economical to contract for this project on the open market and authorize staff to negotiate with a contractor or contractors for pricing that fits the available budget after the architect has narrowed the scope of the project second it's been moved and second any other thoughts comments as long as they don't yeah, narrow the scope of the project too much. We agree. So it's a pergola. <laughs> You're good. Yes. All right. yes, sir. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 What do you think, consent? Sure. Yeah, because yep. we don't have another. We, it isn't like before where there was a contractor who was late. Right. I mean, this is a good. legitimate. Pretty straightforward. Consent. That was illegitimate. Consent. Consent. All right, the highlight of the day, Mike, super video guy. I want to <laughs> congratulate you on those great pieces. Great. Yes, I agree. Great. Thank you. Yeah, they were uh, a lot of fun to make. And uh, if anybody's watching this, any of the millions watching around the world, please check out our YouTube channel for, uh, and see the, the wastewater treatment uh, plant, collection system, compost, soup the nuts. But today, uh, e even perhaps more exciting, Wastewater Municipal Code amendments that are, we're suggesting. <laughs> um, so these were uh, mostly brought forth um, in the transition from the wastewater uh, treatment plant being regulated not by the EPA, but by the state. So now that once we went to the state, there's some things that just don't match up anymore. So that's what really drove this. And then we thought, well, while we're peeling back the onion, we, maybe we can make a couple of extra little things that are no longer appropriate. So um, I hope you've had a chance to look through the documents, um, but I tried to summarize most of them here, obviously, without going through each individual little line item. Um, <clears throat> the current text, uh, it, it specifies specific uh, studies done by, uh, in this case, uh, it'll say HDR in March of 2018. So we're suggesting to remove, um, uh, to remove that language and refer to it as strictly as the most recent study um, rather than a specific study. Also, the current text uh, specifies uh, septage hauler requirements and, um, and how much it costs to do that, but we don't honestly do that anymore. We don't allow people to dump septage into the system anywhere, so uh, with the exception of RVs, dumping at RV dump sites. Um, so we're suggesting removing that. Uh, it also refers to a finance director, which we're suggesting it that the, that verbiage get changed to uh, the city treasurer or their designee. And then, like I said, the big one is this NPDS. 
Um, that's the one that uh, suggests that refers to the EPA uh, and the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, and we're changing that to I P D E S for from National Illinois. to Idaho, which is the Illinois. state's uh, designation, which is a small thing, but obviously not when you're trying to dot your I's and cross your T's, because we are now under an IPDES uh, permit. Um, beyond that, I did want to call your attention specifically also, because uh, it wasn't in the packet, so I wanted to make sure you got, you're okay with this. Um, it was something we, we realized that we did miss that was the state had asked us to, to address, and that is to define what an administrative order is. So in 13.20.1.3, we have our definitions. And uh, an administrative order, if you look at down at the bottom of this definition, is a cease and desist order, consent orders, uh, show cause orders, and compliance orders. We've got all those individual orders and what they are defined. We've got all that defined. We just didn't define what the term was that those things are. <laughs> so it's like defining the word definition in a, in a dictionary. It's, you know, but it is what it is, and they asked for us to have that. So. Uh, we would like to, uh, like I said, that wasn't listed in your packet here, but add the definition of what an administrative order is as well. So I hope I've had a chance to summarize that in a somewhat non-yawny way. Do you have any questions about any specifics that you had a chance to, to look at? But I'd, I'd be glad to uh, go over what, we're, what our thought process is. Let me pick on a couple of them, just some clarification. Sure. Section 10, um, it talked about in the property line is within 200 feet of a, a sewer line, mm -hmm. that's when they can or will plug in. Correct. The 200 feet, does, do they, are they responsible for the run or do we have to get the pipe closer? Uh, no, within 200 feet, uh, the pipe does not have to be, have to be brought close, closer. They'll run their lateral generally to the pipe unless uh, there's not a pipe further on, then we do require people to run it to and through their property. So um, they run the pipe to their property and then through it. So, so it's to not block the next person down, basically. Gotcha. So the main keeps going. Right, exactly. Okay, got it. Um, but in, in most of those cases, um, it's a bit of a cookie cutter process. So there, there may be a line up here that's already addressing all the other uh, <clears throat> properties. And it's just usually the, the one. So when, it, when it's just that isolated individual property and there's nobody else that needs to be serviced, then we'll usually just let them run a lateral to okay. that. 200, felt, 200 feet felt like a long run, but that's why I needed that explanation. Uh, 14, um, I guess that was the sludge and the, the dumping within the city limits, but we don't do that. Correct. Okay. And we don't say we don't, though. <laughs> right. Right. Well, yeah. It, it, it's 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 specific. Well, actually, you're looking at, at 14 or 13. I was looking at. Oh, I'm sorry. Four, 14. Um, Any sewage or sludge, or other refuge from septic tanks, holding tanks, or sources located within our outside, within or outside the city limits. Right, where it used to just say outside, but yeah, we don't accept it. We don't, okay. uh, if it's generated with inside or outside the city, okay. we don't allow people to so dump their So, for example, the county example. dump station that lets RVs dump there, that's not plugged into us and they do their own removal. No. So, yeah, I was trying to, de to designate, to, to delineate those two. Um, Sorry. There are, you know, the, we, so for... Septage, it's referring to the people that'll come and pump out your grease trap at your uh, at your uh, restaurant, for example. Okay, got it. And that gets hauled that that'll get hauled off, um, or a septic tank. You know, if it pumps out a septic tank, we don't allow that to come in. Okay. Um, RVs, uh, those they are allowed to dump at RV dump stations, um, and I believe they're free. Um, and they are several of them are uh, hooked up to our system. Okay. So yeah, that was just sort of an agreement that we had with the Makes the county RV dump, for example, at the and then 17 was, um, uh, you referred to 1979. It seems like we've talked about this before. Um, when people were able to, it was about paying things, paying cap fees and hookup fees prior to 1979. Right. Is this a clarification? Does this help you guys 
it seems like we've talked about this when all of a sudden somebody out in the boondocks goes, wait a minute, I have the right to do this. Well, it was pre-79. Does this help us get there? Uh, so, yeah, this was just uh, – so th that date hasn't changed in this. We're just asking to change uh, from structure to, to property. To property. Okay. Right, exactly. Um, but, yeah, that date um, um, is, is – it doesn't make much sense, honestly, the magic to change number, the date right, right now. All right, and I think that was – and I was at the th recreational RV use. You already addressed it that, so mm – -hmm. I think we're good. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, like I said, it, it was quite a bit of little small changes, so if you had any. Well, we don't get a chance to read this stuff too often, so when you bring it, might as well read it. Right. Now's <laughs> the time. Any questions? Dan? Yes, thank you, Woody. I'm glad you asked about the uh, 200 feet. So right now, there is no limit. Uh, no, right now we do use 200 feet as the limit. Uh, that's it's just not spelled out in our ordinance, but that's that's what we use. Uh, it's 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 a number that we've gotten from uh, the Panhandle Health District. So um, we don't have sewer service all the way out to Silver Beach, but we have property out there. So how does how if someone was going to develop something out on Silver Beach, how what, what do we? I mean, this issue came up. Uh, do we have to extend the, the the line all the way out there, or do they extend the line? We we have the prop whoever the developer is or the property owner uh, extend the public sewer line, mm -hmm. so that through, through their lot to their property. So that isn't hinging on this two hundred feet. If they're if they're outside of two hundred feet, then uh, yeah, they would not be required to connect. Um, but even if it's in the city limits. Well, I would have to look into that honestly. Um, but there is few cases, I would say. I don't, I, I'd be speaking out of turn if I were to guess at that. But I, I don't know. How, in other words, what I'm saying is I don't know how many how many properties are within the city limits that are within um, uh, that are not within 200 feet of public sewer. Mm -hmm. That's the spot. Yeah. It seems like when we developed when the sewer went out there, it was. Uh, Dwayne pulling it through the golf course. He paid for that, as I recall. Yes? Isn't that really what we're talking about is who pays to get the line to you if you're in the city and you're... The developer. Would. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah, we Just don't, like we don't make have. everybody else pay for their sewer, basically. Okay. Like Thank the you. development's running up prairie, they had to pull the pipe to get there and then everybody backfills in. Right? That's correct. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I mean, it's the property owner who ends up, you know, buying the parcel there, not the developer, and ends up paying the ultimate price. I'm certain it gets okay. passed just, along to them. Just want to make sure that this wasn't a limit so that if you had some big developer come in who was building a thousand homes somewhere, and it's like, well, you know, we are beyond the city limits, and therefore you guys pay for it. Oh, right. No, yeah. Okay, no. I apologize. Yes. They would be required to connect up. And okay. Yes. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks for clarifying. I was wondering what's going to happen out there. Oh, yeah, I know. Dick? Just a couple things. So this was triggered by a change uh, in 2018 to the state. That's why you started reviewing this ordinance for updates, right? Correct. And then we went through a rate classification and changed rates here after that time, or was it before that? Actually, it might even be here. Uh, that was done in 20... That was done prior to that. Okay. Because our first rate change was in 2018, so we probably did it in early of 2018. Okay. And then how often... Is there a statute that requires those rates to be looked at, or how often will that occur? As needed. There's not a statute that requires it. Okay. Um, it's, it, it's done, we do it about approximately every five years, um, okay. just to make sure that uh, rates are appropriate. No, nobody's paying more than they should be, or less than they should be, because we don't, we don't charge uh, based on what seems like the right number. We, calculate, okay, it costs X amount of dollars to remove so many pounds, a pound of phosphorus. And the average house puts out a pound of phosphorus, so we say, okay, it's going to cost you this much. And things get changed a little bit here or there as water usage goes down recently. Uh, um, um, some of our fees actually went down and some went up. You know, as, as water usage went down, we found uh, some of the electrical rates went down. So anyways, uh, long story short, we do it about every five years because um, um, that's what seems to be appropriate to keep costs equitable. Okay. And then you and I had this conversation before, 
And I, if you could just explain it again, um, I, I don't recall the answer, mm -hmm. but under the rate calculations, um, item two is about, it discusses the single family residential low use rates, and it says that using water records from the non-irrigation month period, wastewater usage will be averaged for the class each year to determine if the usage charge needs to be adjusted. So you take a residential home and you look at the winter months versus the summer months and that's how you calculate what their sewage fee is. Then in item four, the commercial classes in item low, you don't do that average. What you do is just charge the commercial person sewer rates for all the water that comes into their property, whether it's irrigation or not. So why do you not average the commercial ones like you do the residential ones? Because residential, uh, first of all, you summarized it exactly as we do it. Um, the, the residentials are charged a fixed, one of two fixed fees, either normal or low. And then the commercials are charged based on usage. And it, it's just because residential is pretty standard. The average house will put out approximately the same amount of wastewater, which obviously then costs the same amount to treat, um, whereas commercial can vary so widely from an office space um, uh, to something much bigger. It would, be, it would be really difficult to charge them a fixed rate um, of $100 a month when some, some small commercial outfit wouldn't be using very much at all and a large manufacturing plant would be using a ton. It, it doesn't make much sense to charge them um, a fixed rate. The reason we charge the residents a fixed rate rather than a uh, um, based on per usage is exactly as you alluded to. Um, it, the, uh, the bulk of the water is used in the summertime is used for irrigation and we're not treating it. So it doesn't make sense to pay for it. Uh, for that for okay. treatment on that. And we had that conversation because I kind of, I, I get that there's that huge discrepancy in what would the water for this particular manufacturing building versus a, a barber shop or what, you know, what have you. I just um, have not heard a reasonable explanation as to why you would charge a commercial person for irrigation water when you know it's irrigation water. Because so. I don't. I don't know how much is irrigation. Uh, they, they're, they're welcome to get an irrigation meter, in which many of the businesses that do a lot of irrigating do that, um, and then they're not charged uh, wastewater rates on that. But I have no idea how much uh, of that water is irrigation and not. I think irrigation uh, meters is something new in the last maybe five or ten years where it was always the water you use, like at home, when you're sprinkling, it's theoretically sewer water too. But commercial side I mean like downtown those guys don't water their parking lots or you know that don't have parking lots so I get it it would probably be a, a good project to kind of look into that and just maybe get a cleaner explanation I think you got yeah. it I don't get it because they're they're whether they're a resident or whether they're commercial they're not irrigating in December so if you're taking December's water input to a facility whether it's residential or commercial it's not going to be the same as July. You know how much the difference is. So, so that's where I, I just, uh, I don't understand why, and yet, yeah, I, I suppose you could put in a really expensive irrigation separate meter, but it does not make sense that you can do it for a residence that's a structure, a two bedroom house versus a 15 bedroom house. You can do that for a residence, but you can't do it for a commercial property. And you're charging a commercial property um, for sewer while they're irrigating and it's not going into the sewer system. So that, I just still don't have my head around why you would not be able to run the same process that this ordinance says for a resident with a commercial property, so. so just something I'll also keep in mind is that there are also seasonal differences. Um, for example, uh, in, in residents, obviously, irrigation in the summer and non-irrigation in, in the winter. But um, so the way we determine that is based on low usage, less than 5,000 gallons over two months. There's a little formula there. Um, but uh, one of the other stipulations is the person has to be here. If we find that there's zero water usage for two months, well, because you're a snowbird, 
and you're and you're summer or you're wintering down in Arizona and coming here doesn't mean you're not using a lot of water in the in the in the summertime. So you wouldn't qualify for that low water rate as a resident. So there there are several stipulations. I would say likewise. Um, just something to bear in mind is that it's possible that uh, a commercial business is not using the same amount of water in the winter time. Uh, Wastewater, not not if you were to not look at irrigation, just the same amount of wastewater in the winter time as they do in the summer, based on a process that they're doing or something like that. Something that is just very complex. It's not a standard thing like a resident. There, there's bowling alleys, there's offices, which are likely very similar to a uh, resident, but very different than a uh, metal stamping outfit, let's say, or, or some other. There's just so many different commercial um, businesses out there. Okay, I still don't have a good explanation, but we could be here for a long time because apparently there's not going to be a good explanation as to why we charge sewer fees for irrigation water on commercial properties. So, uh, there you go. That's good discussion. Dan? Oh, I'm in favor of being here all day. Okay. <laughs> I would love to talk about irrigation water, but I don't think anybody else does. <laughs> so if there's no other questions, I would look for a motion to at least get this started. So let's move that council approve amendments to municipal code in chapters 1308, 1312, 1316, and 1320 pertaining to the wastewater discharge permit. I'll second that for discussion, and I would also ask that there is a, a staff report that comes back with a good explanation on the discussion we had today at some point in the future. Sure. I think you can do that, Mike. A video would be really I, great. I, <laughs> I would really enjoy it, honestly. I do like uh, trying to clarify those things. Cool. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded with a suggestion to come back with a little more detail on that. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So that will go on the agenda. Mike, you can come back and tell the story again. Uh, thank you. I'd love okay. to. <laughs> and to answer your question. And with that, I'll look for some movement to adjourn. Unless I just want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. Moved and second. Thanks, everyone. It's good to see everybody again. Jenny, hang in there. Bye.